right, thanks very much for being here, for coming out. I know it's short notice. I appreciate you uh, braving the traffic to be here. Um, as I said in my, in my email when I uh, announced the availability, we're here to talk about Bryce. Uh, as you know from our previous messaging, he, he collapsed on Wednesday morning. He was taken to the hospital and uh, he was put on life support. So, uh, and he passed this afternoon. Um, these folks have, uh, and a lot of Furman, other Furman folks have been, you know, working tirelessly uh, uh, to be with him and with his family. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll let you ask questions. I don't know if anybody wants to open with a comment or anything, but you can ask questions about Bryce. Um, we can't talk about his medical condition because we simply don't know it. Um, they're just details that, that are unknown. So. Um, and with that, if you have any uh, follow-ups or anything later, you can get in touch with me. Uh, Hunter Reed's also here from Athletics, and um, Jerry Ingram from Athletics. Uh, we can follow up with you at, uh, at another time if you need to. But uh, I, get, I can get it started. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I just want to thank you for being here. Um, I want to thank the Stanfield family for their care and everything that they have gone through this past week. But I specifically want to thank our university, our leadership, uh, Jason Casty, our dean of students, uh, who was here throughout the process from the beginning to the end, and everything our Department of Student Life has done on behalf of the family. Uh, but I specifically want to thank Coach Clay Hendricks um, and his wife Leanne, his staff, for their care uh, for Bryce, um, and they've been with him throughout this entire time. And uh, it's important to know that the care for Bryce is not just for him, but for his parents, for Terry, for Fred, for their extended family. Uh, but also for the members of our team and the members of our community the members of our coaching staff and uh, what that means to go through this process. But I'm grateful for these two men uh, and for what they've done on behalf of Bryce's family and what they've done on behalf of Furman University. And we can take questions as you're ready. Um, can you give us just kind of a uh, window into who Bryce was and the type of student and athlete well, that, that's an easy thing to talk about. Uh, I just met with our team. Um, it's been a tough few days, but Bryce really is the kind of epitome of everything we kind of value in our program. Uh, you know, at Farmer, we're fortunate to have a lot of really bright guys, really good students. Like, you know, but he was at the very top of that group. You know, he was pre-dental. Uh, you know, student, outstanding student, really, really good player. Uh, heavily involved in service in the community, um, I, you know, and just that guy that treated everybody the same, you know, and uh, I, like I said, that, that's the easiest thing I could I could say today. Uh, as challenging as it's been for a few days, that, that's an easy thing to talk about. How was Bryce as, you know, not only as a defensive player, he was, you know, a really good defensive player, again, two and a half sacks last year for you guys, but how was Bryce in the locker room and looked upon by his team? I think the word respect probably is what comes more than anything else, just because he just, you know, we laugh. I, I told his mom and dad, you know, we talk a lot about being low maintenance and dependable, and he's about as low maintenance and dependable a guy as there's ever been, but just just highly respected for how he went about his business. And again, how he, how he treated others. Uh, you know, Andre Bernardi, I just, I, I literally was at the hospital a bit ago and here heard him, Andre talking to his folks about about him in the weight room. Uh, just everything he did, he, he kind of excelled at, and uh, and I you know I think I think guys naturally respect guys like that. And for, fortunately, in a place like ours, we have a lot of those guys. But again, I I would say he's right up there at the very top of our group. Do you know if leading up to Wednesday morning he was sick or complaining of an injury or anything like that? No, he, the only thing I'll say is you know he had been uh, we we'd been doing some some morning workouts which is we do every year and really we're going to start practice yesterday and he had had, he had, had a you know some back a back strain that had limited what he could do and really was just trying to rehab him to get him ready to be ready to go when practice started and but but uh, you know it's something they've been been dealing with which is pretty common practice with with lots of guys and but other other than that nothing and Bryce as a student um, everybody was mentioning that he was heavily involved in the service with the men's distinction. 
very excellent student, very high in GPA. Can you talk about his dedication to service outside of football? Yeah, so uh, Men of Distinction is a uh, program that um, we have ladies of distinction and men of distinction, and in this one, uh, middle school boys in the community get connected with our um, young men on campus, uh, our students, and Bryce was heavily involved in that. He looked forward to that on a weekly basis, uh, spending time with those boys, and they would play basketball and uh, try to uh, you know, be positive role model uh, for uh, some of the boys in the community. Uh, I think he also would go out and read. Um, they had a group that would go into uh, elementary schools, and uh, he enjoyed doing that and reading. And um, I think he also, talking to uh, some of his uh, roommates, uh, uh, was in the grill club, uh, which, which is a group that just they get together and they love to grill out. Um, and his roommates enjoyed when he would uh, bring some extra grilled steak back to the apartment. So, um, yeah, he, he was heavily involved outside of uh, football as well. And, as, and according to um, the letter sent out the faculty, um, the president of the university um, conferred to him a Bachelor of Science degree and Magna Cum Laude to him. Yeah, and I can, I can talk about that. Um, we spoke with the team a little while ago and, and shared with them that's one of the more special things I've ever been around. And uh, thanks to Coach Hendricks and thanks to Jason and thanks to Prisma Hospital uh, for allowing the entire team to be there. And President Elizabeth Davis was there and she was able to confer a degree to him. Uh, so he is a Furman graduate. Uh, and that was something that was very important to him as a student, it was very important to him and his parents, it was very important to our team. Uh, but one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen was the entire team there with him uh, in the bed, in the room, spending time with him, praying, crying, uh, being together as a Furman football team, which really meant the world to him. In talking with players and family, I mean, this is really sad. This is a tragic loss. He's 21, 22 mm -hmm. years 21. old. Um, how is this hitting them? I'm sure it's a very heavy thing. Well, uh, yeah, I've been doing this a long time myself, and the first time I've been a part of this. Had friends that have dealt with some. I've, had, I've heard from a lot of guys. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's tragic any time. Uh, I, I know, and, uh, you know, a football team is such a unique family-type situation anyways, and I think uh, which makes it all the more difficult. Uh, you know, like I said, just nothing's, nothing's, there. nothing's been easy for three days, and um, you know, really proud of our, proud of our kids, and our team. Really proud of our university, and I mean, Jason's office. Uh, Dr. Davis, when she came and did that, had a chance to, you know, participate in that. And, uh, it was wonderful, but it was challenging uh, to be there. Uh, but just, uh, like I said, the whole Furman, Furman, Furman family is a unique group anyways. But, you know, a number of people I've heard from, ex-players, ex-teammates of mine, uh, fans, friends, I just, you know, but like I said, it, it is a tragedy. I mean, just really, really is. And, you know, we, we all want to answer. We all want to ask about why. And, you know, hopefully we'll find some things out, you know. Uh, but, you know, again, I'm, I'm believing the good Lord has a plan for all of us, and he doesn't make mistakes. As, as somebody told me, and he doesn't make mistakes, and uh, it's up to us to kind of figure out what the, what, what what grades going to come out of this, and and that's just kind of what I what I expressed our team, and that that's kind of what we're trying to do: look after each other going forward. I'll, I'll share um, on on Wednesday. I think it's notable to mention that our student athletes, our our leaders in fellowship, of Christian athletes, our leaders in student uh, affairs, our leaders um, SAC, uh, they all came together on Wednesday evening. Uh, while Bryce was in the hospital to pray for him and uh, to see uh, all the students on this campus gather, uh, all the teams gather, um, to go through a period of reflection, to send notes to Bryce, um, to be led in a prayer group by a student, Ty Youngblood, who's a member of the football program, um, was remarkable. And, and they, they prayed for Bryce, they prayed for his family, they prayed for strength. And um, for me, that was one of the most touching moments that I've seen at this university is to see them come together in that way and I think that really speaks to the character of Furman University and the type of students that we have. Do you all have anything planned, maybe a memorial on campus or maybe a candlelight vigil or anything kind of yeah. coming up for students? 
we're going to work with the family uh, to plan a memorial service on campus in the uh, coming week, probably week or two. Uh, we'll work with the family to uh, do what's best around their schedule, but um, that will be a, a plan and something we'll have on campus. Uh, they're all from Georgia. Yep. Is there any plan to uh, potentially postpone or cancel classes for students during this time of morning? No. Um, you know, students sometimes can be conflicted about that because, you know, when you're 18 to 21 years old, this isn't something you experience a lot of yet. And sometimes this is the first uh, time in their life where they experience um, loss. and. So we'll help them navigate that. Um, something that's just really important uh, in these times, and we know this as adults, is being with those you love and care about in times of grief and sadness and loss. And so what we don't want to do, we want to respect Bryce and, and honor him, and we will. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to cancel all university operations because that's where our community comes together. Um, and so being together is really important uh, to the healing process. And, so we'll be respectful of that. We'll give flexibility, um, academic flexibility to our students, those who are close to Bryce and need some of that, because all of our students are going to manage this in their own way and in different ways, and it'll, it'll manifest itself differently. Um, and so back to your earlier question, uh, we, have, we have support systems and things in place at Furman where we will keep an eye on uh, students and stay connected to them and, and work with them individually uh, to support them in the weeks ahead. This will this will take uh, this will take a, a while. Coach, if I may, um, the last 48 hours for you, um, it's probably one of the hardest you've had to go through being with the family in the hospital. Just how are you doing today? I, I'm doing well. Um, you know, I told our team which is probably the hardest thing to do to dress them. Uh, Y'all are actually a little easier to dress than it was to talk to them, but, um, you know, I'm really too proud. I, I, I thought pretty early on just what I'd heard, you know, we, we, we need a miracle. And that was probably my number one prayer. And then I think the other one was just having, having the strength to really get up for our guys because I needed to be with them. You know, and certainly my interactions with the family. What an unbelievable family. You know, I met all the extended family, and you know, it's just it's amazing the last, you know, as you say, 48 hours, even maybe even longer. Um, you know, but it, like I said, it, 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 it is what it is. And, uh, you know, I rely on uh, my staff. I've gotten some great notes from just guys I work with every day, you know, and, and certainly people. I hadn't heard from them in a long time. They're just just people everywhere. But I'm, like I said, I'm I'm, I'm doing fine. This this you know I, t I told them we, we met uh, Monday afternoon I guess or excuse me Wednesday afternoon we had a team meeting and I went back to the hospital and you know I I knew at that time and I told her guys you know we got, we we got some tough days ahead uh, and then you know even with the tragic news of today we got some tough days ahead. And you know we'll we'll get through it, you know we'll get through it. We'll honor Bryce and Bryce is a, like I said, he, Bryce is a, a pretty easy guy to, you know, when his name pops up, I know the first things that come into my my mind. I mean, like I said, he was just kind of the epitome again of everything we want to be in our program and at our school. And so that that's kind of what I'm gonna try to focus on. Anything else that might be in the works to honor Bryce or any other words? that you want to say about Bryce? You know, I think for us, um, this is still new. This is fresh. And um, knowing how we'll work together and what we'll do as a university, we will find more ways to honor Bryce in, in the months ahead. Um, and I think we're all going through a grieving process right now, and we're dealing with what the reality is. But we uh, will certainly will honor Bryce. We'll remember Bryce. Um, it'll be uh, an honor for us to do something in his name, his memory. And uh, you're talking about someone with a a megawatt smile. You're talking about someone that just lifted up the room when he was there. Uh, a very accomplished student. Um, someone that's going to be dearly missed, not just by our team, but by the fellow students, his faculty, professors, his advisors. Um, this is someone that's really, really special above and beyond. And uh, a very loving son and a loyal friend. Uh, but we'll find opportunities to honor him in the future.
I just want to express my gratitude to Prisma Health. Um, we've been with them for the last three days, and I've never seen any um, the type of care that they provided to Bryce and to his family, everyone from surgeons to nursing staff, uh, administration, uh, chaplains. I mean, they were present, um, they were invested, um, they were supportive of, you know, a hundred <laughs> college guys and, and family. Um, I just, I know not all hospital systems are equipped to do that or willing to do that. And it was, um, it, it was amazing to, uh, be there with them and, and watch them in action. So just kudos to all of our healthcare professionals and all that they did uh, for uh, this family and for our university. What can the, the greater Greenville community do to help support students, faculty, staff at, at Brooklyn? That's a great question. I, I think um, similar to what I mentioned, for me, what I mentioned earlier about our community doesn't just stop and we don't want to isolate ourselves. Um, I also would say we don't want to exclude our external community, um, our Greenville community. They're part of the Furman family and, uh, you know, they, many of them, probably more than some of our other students, um, they have a connection in many ways to Bryce because if, if they're football fans and um, have come and watched him play for the last three years, um, you know, they have, a, they have some sort of connection uh, to him. So continue to uh, support our students and, um, you know, be, we welcome them to be a part of the, the Furman community always. Yeah, I was just going to share that one of the unique parts of this process with Bryce's family is that from the moment they got to the hospital they actually welcomed everyone in mm -hmm. and um, they wanted the coaches in the room they wanted Furman in the room and uh, their willingness to share this has allowed the community to get behind Bryce and to support him um, talking with the family they, they know they feel it and I think it's a really important thing that in, in this day and age I think it's a really wonderful thing the amount of people have reached out that have shared the sympathy that have shared their condolences that have shared their empathy um, one funny story, I mean, they're from Georgia, and uh, besides Furman, they love Georgia football. Uh, when they heard that Michigan had reached out with uh, support, they said, well, we don't like Michigan, but we'll take it, and uh, they appreciate that. But um, the fact that they felt the love and attention from so many people, and they felt the prayers and the sympathy, and I think if there's anything the Greenville community can continue to do would be to continue to reach out to that family, uh, continue to reach out to this team, uh, continue to reach out to these students and put their arms around them, that they feel the support um, and, and they feel the prayers, so we're grateful. And can you talk about you know, some of the resources as students that might be watching this, what they can do as they try to process this? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, Furman is blessed with uh, lots of support resources for our students on a daily basis, and um, when these types of uh, tragedies happen, uh, you know, fortunately for us, not often, um, they just, they, they kick it into, uh, high gear even more than they normally do and so you know we have a full chaplaincy staff available to our uh, students and faculty and staff uh, we have a uh, full fully resourced counseling center um, and after hours access uh, as well uh, crisis line access for our students um, we have um, uh, kind of a support team within student life that will connect individually uh, with students and already have uh, those who are closest to uh, Bryce and really helping them kind of walk through this and, and navigate their own path through this. So um, we've, we've enacted all of those uh, resources uh, back, you know, well, it's always through the semester, but especially starting Wednesday. Um, and uh, they, they've been uh, ready and connected and available and present and will continue to be so in the, in the weeks ahead. So uh, we've, we've communicated with all of our students, the entire student body, um, all of those resources, and, and they know how to access those. And um, our, our faculty and staff also know how to let us know uh, and refer students when they're worried about them. And, and they do, and they will. Anybody else? Any other questions? Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you.